everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Dave, let's talk data governance. Yeah, we're deep into uh, Snowflake Summit, and data governance is, I think, if not the number one, number one or number two topic. Yeah, maybe here. second yeah. to AI, but yeah, Gen AI. Well, they go hand in hand. <laughs> they right? do indeed. You got to govern this AI or it's out of control. Indeed, so. indeed. Yeah. So let me introduce our next two guests. We have Bala Rajkapalan. He is the Chief Information Security Officer at TradeWeb. Welcome. And Navindra Yadav, co-founder and CEO of Tiom. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Hey guys. Excited to have you. Let's start with you, Navindra. Tell us a little bit about Tiom. So Tiom is this uh, data control plane. It observes uh, how data, what data do you have, who's got access to this data, what are they doing with this data, for what purpose are they using this data, how is data flowing inside your organization. On top of that, we build different outcomes like cybersecurity comes out, another one is data quality and how are you actually managing a quality, the lineage of data, and so on and so forth. So you get a good broad view about what's happening in your data environment. Excellent, excellent. And how are you using TradeWeb? Oh, how, uh, TradeWeb is using us for cybersecurity. That's why you've got the CISO uh, there. They get good visibility about it, but I won't uh, get into that. I'll let Bala speak for that. <laughs> okay. uh, Thank yeah, you. Just, just set it up. Talk, yeah, talk a little yeah. bit about TradeWeb. Really interesting company. You've been growing like crazy. You shared yeah, with us. I mean, TradeWeb, we are number one in the fixed income trading market. Right. We provide trading marketplace to various institutions. So we basically have a, a request for code system, RFQ system, and various products are dealt through that one we connect the uh, institutions with the liquidity providers like banks and sell side, and we provide the marketplace transparency and everything. We are one of the leading fixed income trading uh, platform in the world, globally traded on various, uh, various asset classes. Yeah, so it's interesting because you are, you've waded into a, 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 a big market with a lot of legacy players, um, You've got a blue chip customer. <laughs> what's your what's your differentiation? Uh, and and I'm really interested in in, in why you guys you know, took a chance on a, on a company like Dion versus some of the other legacy players. But start so there if you would. I'll start with the thing. So we've gone after the regulated industry mm -hmm. space. Most of the regulated industry does not like the data moving out of their environment. So Theum mm -hmm. runs inside natively inside Snowflake. So it, no data of the customer leaves their jurisdiction. Even the metadata that we generate stays with the customer. That's a big deal for many of our customers. Uh, very different architecture, very different model, and we can also run completely air-gapped in uh, customer environments where the whole thing runs with the customer, nothing coming towards us. So that's a big differentiation uh, thing. And then just not stay at security, give a wider view about things, like data contracts is another example. How are people using data? Where are, where's this data actually flowing? Why are they using this? What purpose are they using it? All of that starts coming together. That's how we're approaching the whole problem holistically. So how were you handling this problem prior to Theom and, and what led you to the company? So uh, I'll talk about generally the financial institution because I have more than 25 years of experience in financial Great. various institutions. Yeah. Generally, we like to build our own stuff. Financial industry like, take pride in building their own stuff, right? Build versus buy is always a topic of conversation when you try to bring in. So in the past, when a new technology like Snowflake to come into play, everyone tries to build some layer of visibility and governance around on top of it with their own tools. That's kind of and then there will be new players coming in trying to make whatever you did much better and things like that. Theom is one example. Like we have been doing our own state of monitoring, using legacy tools and things like that. Whether it's a SIM or other types of internally developed scripts and things like that, we try to monitor it on our own way. Theum came in and was able to provide additional visibility. So I'll give you an example. We have always a challenge when you have this big data lake, when you have thousands and thousands of data sets, and you have thousands of users accessing at the same time, the problem becomes very complex. You have too many access, you don't know which one's excessive, which one's necessary. You have a lot of data flow happening, you don't know if all of this data flow is required, you are always in an optimization mode and things like that. How do you get that visibility across in one single pane? TM was able to help us with that initially in a data discovery pattern. We can see who accessed the data, who did not access the data. Stale access is one thing. Shadow access is another thing, creating multiple copies of data 
for simple purposes or one-time use and not cleansing. Hygiene was missing, so that visibility came into play. Data flow is another area, like how data is moving from your main data set to various other places, and how is that used? So the lineage of the data became much more clear and things like that. Again, we did it with our own, but then players like Theom and others are coming up as the ecosystem grows, these tools are going to give us much more clarity on what we are doing. So true what you say about financial services wanting to build their own. I remember financial services clients in the early days of cloud telling me, we're going to build our own cloud. I, I've got a number telling me they're going to build their own LLM now. Yeah. They're going to bring in silicon vendors, and so we'll see how that plays out. But why is it that financial institutions have that mindset? Because they want to be first, that gives them a competitive advantage, right? I, I see two, uh, two reasons for it. One is definitely competitive advantage because Every financial institution is competing with the other one. So who comes to the market first is always a, always a race, right? There's a, definitely a competitive advantage in it because if you look at the products and services that the financial institutions are generally offering, it's very, very, very similar with some nuances built in around it. The second thing is the data that we are handling is very, very sensitive and the volume in which we handle the information the industry has not dealt with that volume in the past. So a lot of vendors, when they come up with their new product, the main challenge is scalability. Whether it is a cloud vendor, cloud doing it, whether it's new data vendor doing it, scalability has been the main reason why they are not able to immediately get financial institutions buy-in in terms of adopting a commercially available tool. So we do it. And the third thing obviously is the pride. When you build your own stuff, when you build your own engine, and you can go to market and be very proud about it. Like all of these things plays a major role in it. Yeah, so how do you overcome that? I mean, the, the pride thing is real in terms of making sure you're, the, the people who are working in FinTech are feeling that sense of ownership and pride. Yeah, FinTech has always been that innovative side, right? And then I think the most competing one is the tech market when it started to come out, they started to innovate more. So I see the FinTech and the, and the true technology industries are competing right now. And there's always a debate about who is innovating faster kind of a thing. <laughs> that innovation will not go away. Like we will take commercially available tools and we will put our own signature and we will continue to innovate in that space. We will push the envelope as always, right? right? So that the pride never disappears if not here until tomorrow. Take AI as an example. As you started saying, we are going to create, again, it comes from the fear that that data is very, very valuable. There is a lot of unknown in the AI space today, how data is used. We are very sensitive to data breaches, and we are very sensitive to data leakage even from a reputational perspective. We don't want any of our client data to even be leaked in any reason whether it's a technology glitch or a cyber incident kind of a thing. <clears throat> so the first instinct is let's build our own LLM. LLM is not a new concept for financial institutions. They have been having that for various purposes. It's just that how to do it at the mass scale is the next wave of this. Yeah, but in this case, okay, so Theom has come in, you've said, okay, they can have a governance uh, product that scales, and then you can go off and innovate somewhere else. I mean, that's really the lesson here, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. We are able to build a policy management and automation workflow because resources is always a challenge, especially in security. So one of the good thing is we got the visibility through the home. We were able to bring in a good policy management from the data governance perspective, and we were able to automate the processes around it. So it's a multi-step process simplified because of one player coming in and giving that initial edge. This idea of, of, of shadow uh, that, that you mentioned, Shadow AI, right, right, is a real concern. Are you seeing this across uh, other clients? And yes, how are you we are. With that? Uh, so that's another area where Theom goes into uh, governing Gen AI and securing Gen AI. And that absolutely starts off with when you're training your models, what are your models trained on? That's one example. Another example that we see with our uh, other customers is uh, they don't want to create many LLMs. LLMs, training LLMs and building these large models is expensive. It's not a cheap thing. 
So if they've got different sets of users, uh, even though uh, it's the same knowledge graph that you have, the same knowledge data, how do you actually prune that knowledge data so depending upon who's asking the question, the right answer is given to them and there's no information disclosure from there and that's really what we help them prune their graphs around, uh, knowledge graphs around. Have you built your own knowledge graph or are you using? The customers build their knowledge graph, Theum constrains those knowledge graphs based on who's asking the question at runtime. And, and how do you query that knowledge graph? Do you use, is that where That's AI where we're getting into the proprietary secret sauce. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a hard thing yeah, to do, right? Because yes. normally when you're querying a knowledge graph, you got to go, you have to revert to 15 years of yes. you know, ancient techniques. And yeah. you, can, you don't have a query, yeah. or a, a SQL simplicity of your query. So you've built that secret yeah. sauce. So we built that secret sauce. In fact, this is why we run our engines in the customer's premises or jurisdictions, because data cannot leave their environment. And the only way you can successfully build a good knowledge graph is run in their environment and build it for them. And then start pruning it in their environment. Devinder, what are some best practices that have emerged as you are assisting companies with their security journey? I mean, as we just heard from Bala, this is, it's a highly regulated industry. There is a lot of fear and a lot of caution around, around their data. How, what, are, what are some of your advice that you give too? My two cents, and Bala is the right person to ask this. He's the real practitioner. I'm on the side building things. Uh, but my uh, two cents would be hygiene. Focus on your hygiene first rather than preventative medicine comes in. This is like, uh, uh, do your hygiene right, and after that have the right detectors in your system to uh, trip wires if you, to tell you whether there's something anomalous happening, uh, things, and yeah, the, but the question should be with Papa. Yeah, and if you could add it in the context of, th of threat mitigation Yeah, right, as exactly. Well, you know? Yeah, absolutely, like, I mean, hygiene is definitely number one priority. Mm -hmm. Discipline and hygiene goes hand in hand in here, because when I say discipline, how you manage your data, how you allow access and how do you keep your hygiene in a, at a high rate, high successful rate is always a challenge. It's like the day in and day out, you have to do X, Y, and Z tasks in a way and use automation as a good way to execute those things. Right? Um, threats are only going to evolve. Threats are never going to stop. The AI is going to bring in a new flavor of those threats. Right? No one has predicted. But there are basic building blocks like if you are able to use a certain process consistently and get good results. You always have to try to find an efficient way to improve that efficiency, right? So uh, hygiene is number one, right? The threat, if I go into the threat side of the house, right? Make sure that the known threats are handled very well today because what you want to spend your efforts are unknown threats. Or unknown threats are threats on the horizon because that's fast approaching with the AI on the horizon it's only fast approaching for you, right? There is going to be a lot of challenges. As an industry, we are going to learn. The thing is, we are always very protective of how we share information when it comes to threats. Thing. The new way of doing business to be stay protective, protected is by sharing proper information, right? That building an ecosystem. So, man, make sure that you do your processes right you determine how you want to share the information with a wider industry because you need that wider industry thing trend to analyze what type of threats you are doing. Tools like, I, um, this is something that I always ask the vendors, how are you going to integrate with my ecosystem? Within our company and within the larger, wider industry because there is uh, some kind of, uh, in every industry, there's a certain types of tools, uh, vendor tools, that you can say that it's repetition thing, right? because it's more familiarity. Because they try to solve the same problem that others, our competitors are having, or other institutions are having, and things like that. So that in integration piece is extremely important. So don't pick a tool just because it's solving one problem. Figure out how it's going to integrate into your ecosystem, which can, which can enable you solving other problems. Were, well. were you at <coughs> RSA a few Unfortunately, weeks ago? I couldn't make it this year. Okay, okay but you've been. Yes, I so you know how complicated that ecosystem is, right? I mean, <laughs> the, last year at RSA, the conversation was about, uh, you know, how the bad guys are going to use LLMs to write better phishing emails. This year was all about the threats that AI brings and the exposures, you know, the, the unknown threats. They were kind of maybe not unknown last year, but they weren't certainly weren't being discussed. Now they're being discussed, and that ecosystem is so complex. Yes. So I, I'm inferring that having something like Theom that is in, actually integrated. In, in Snowflake, uh, that you don't have to worry about moving data, that 
at least take some of the worry away, and then you can focus on all the other impossible to solve challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Like simplifying complex problems is a key. Every vendor has to strive to make their product. What is the one thing that you are going to simplify for the customers? That's an important aspect I always look at because mm -hmm. the problems are only going to be complex going forward. With a lot of technology innovations, that complexity is not going to reduce. It's only going to increase. How to make that, simplify that complex problem is number one key. How do you look at is this all discussion of open table formats? Is that something that uh, you just try to avoid for now or is that something that you're leaning into? Um, we always take a cautious route when it comes to you know, open uh, sources and things like that. Because you know, we have always had that initial problems of trust, trusting uh, and the scalability again comes into a big problem, right? So we are always very cautious. Regulated industry has taught us very well how to take cautious stuff but safe and secure stuff. So we are, we are going to be in that mode always. Mm. And how is AI, I mean, we're hearing from Bala about the concerns, the unknown threats, and, and the, the additional threats that AI poses. How, does it, how is it changing from your perspective how organizations approach governance? Oh, absolutely. So there are two parts where AI comes in. One is securing AI, and the other part is use AI to drive security. So what we're doing is both. Uh, we use AI inside our detection engines to detect like uh, Bala and I were just talking earlier today, it's these unknowns. How do you find those uh, in those 1% or 0.1% of uh, all the data? What are those unknown things that we're missing and finding those abnormalities? And that's where you can leverage AI a lot and there are a lot of good techniques. We were having a good conversation earlier uh, during breakfast, I uh, think. So Theum uses that and we also secure uh, AI. So, there you really need to focus on the knowledge graphs and so on and so forth, what pruning, and do it earlier. Don't try to do it later is my thesis, because at runtime when you're trying to protect, like trying to insert firewalls and things, that's a harder problem to solve, and you have very small windows in which you have to respond, like latencies aren't there and so on and so forth. Whereas if you're proactively curtailing the knowledge what this individual should or should not see, it's much more effective, rather than trying to withdraw information once it's leaked out. Uh, you, you started the company in 2020, correct? Yes, December 2020. And you're relatively, in December, oh yeah, really 2021. <laughs> yes, yes. So and you're relatively small. Yes. Right? You haven't raised a ton of dough, no. right? Which is interesting Thank to me, because you, know, you see all this money being raised and three quarters of it will be wasted. What was your philosophy in starting the company and funding it? And I'm really interested in how TradeWeb decided to, to go with a smaller company, but to start. So, I'm old school, uh, uh, so capital efficiency is big because at the end of the day you're taking money from someone, uh, make good value, produce good value out of the money, so spend wisely. It's more of a frugal approach, don't go too flashy, but again, that's a personal uh, thing. So that's why we've not burnt a whole lot of capital. Uh, we put our own money in this uh, too, but it's been going pretty well and we are now going with our next phase, so that process is going. But build the revenue, get the revenue stream in, let businesses go the old school, where uh, your investors can see, okay, this is the value, the, it's a repeatable motion, you've got customers lining up, it's, uh, and they can see all the different lines in which the product sells. Then, uh, once you've got that running, then get to hire a sales team, so before this it was all founder-led sales that we've been doing, and now we're now uh, moving into hiring a sales and team. And you got product market fit now, and then you're exactly. scaling go to market. market. But, Sweat equity. But, but how did you sort of, mitigate the, the risk of dealing with a smaller company like that. You must have run them through the paces. You didn't say, oh, let's just try it and go to production. <laughs> right. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm one of the early adopters of TM technology. It has been very good to us so far. Right? I, always, I always end it so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very simple. The business wants to accelerate some of the initiatives that they had, and Snowflake was the right place to do. So the, when the business is going that fast, I need to meet security at the same speed in which to do. Again, going with the build versus buy, right? In this instant, buy made much more sense. So we looked at various products and then one important aspect is data cannot leave our premise because we are already dealing with a lot of unknowns within a data lake that's in the cloud, especially Snowflake. How do you make sure that you don't introduce multiple unknowns for it? We are very particular about third party access in our data. So how do we bring in security vendors who, who can understand that requirement 
and then provide a solution to a complex problem is what we. And then Tiam was able to do that initial um, solution for us, and then we have been able, you know, able to work very closely with them and partner with them on various other activities. It's a great story, congratulations. Thank you. Really thank you, Paula and Navinder, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank, thank you, you so for much for having us. Thank you for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.